in so in the south in the blue we have master matt playing as the holy roman empire and voiceless will you introduce our player in the north in the north in the teal for the first time today it's the ottomans played by hosen and i am excited to see some ottomans they are they're a crispy sieve i like them i like them so many options so many different uh you know vizier points are viable and uh i i agree with you it will be interesting to see what our ottoman player brings to this match hosen's played a lot of uh, malians in the last two matches we saw um so it'll be great to see him play as the ottomans now master matt is going to be uh playing as the holy roman empire again of course he can uh, do that since uh, he was not victorious in the last round so he's going to be taking another shot and um well, I think, I don't know. I'm not sure if he ha will have a better opportunity against the Ottomans than he will against the Malians. Uh, do you have any opinions on that, Voices? It's tough to say. Like, honestly, you never really know how it's all going to shake out between these two sieves because, it, like, the Ottomans for a really long time liked to play archer spam in the feudal age right and the holy roman empire has the hard counter to that in the man at arms so in theory the man at arms or the, the, the holy roman empire should be able to outplay that but the ottomans with their constant free production coming out from their military schools and the flexibility to go into things like sepahi means that there's raids and there's ways that you can wear the holy roman empire down and so when it all comes down to it like it just it's so back and forth and i've seen this matchup go both directions so many different times and that's before we got landmark changes and buffs and so it's basically what i'm saying is who knows man <laughs> interesting that we see uh master matt going ahead with that early tower potentially expecting those spearmen to come in and uh you know raid is gold so reading that correctly you know the spearman is going to be coming across that tower is going to secure the gold for sure um it is a bit of an investment but I think it makes sense, especially because the wood line's very close. So now he's relatively safe for his critical resources as long as the sheep last. On the opposite side of the map, our Ottoman player has secured a, a decent number of sheep. They are going to, uh, go, well, they'll be going up shortly. Should be before the four minute mark. Um, in response to Everlast, yes, this is our top bracket finals here between Hosen and Master Matt. Hosen is up by one in this best of three. So a win for the Ottomans means we are done here in the top bracket and Hosen is crowned champion. If Master Matt can take us to victory, that will be a game three. And we'll have to wait and see how that plays out. As we see the Aachen Chapel going to get dropped down, the Ottomans going to be following suit shortly behind with the age two of their own. And I expect to see the twin minaret Madressa. It's almost always the twin minaret Madressa. There it is. The old pal, old faithful. The uh, twin minaret Madressa, of course. Um, and uh, now, I, I don't, I don't, I think this Aachen would have been better just slightly to the left. I, I know that's quite nitpicky, but, um, you know, it would have captured a little bit more of the wood line and then the same. <laughs> The same with the gold. This spearman won't do much. You know, he could pop one into the tower. The, the prelate's not nearby, but either way, the villagers will get back up to full health. The spearman will go down. He'll actually get oh, away. That's escape. crazy. <laughs> it's honestly uh, for a tip for those of you at home who like to play the Ottomans. It's generally advisable not to start harassing with your spearman until you have about three. Three is the nice number where you can do damage and uh, really start to make the enemy player panic even underneath an outpost. If you have just one, you get exactly what you saw there, where the enemy goes, oh, look at that. You're poking me. Uh, okay, I'll just uh, I'll just garrison, I guess, and uh, problem solved. Yeah. So when you, uh, when you push with about three, that's panic time. That's when you're really in the potential to kill a villager before they have a chance to react. And again, it's exactly what you said. Villagers will just be able to garrison. Prelate is here, ready to hop in the chapel, but also just able to heal up those So, Asgar, I saw your question in the chat. The uh, answer to that is varied. So, in our low elite ELO Legends tournaments, we have different brackets. We've got our lower bracket, which plays about silver goldish, all the way up to this, which is our top bracket. 
Top Racket plays Plat to Diamond. So we, uh, you know, there's a big variability in between the three brackets. What you're currently watching is our top bracket, so these are the higher skilled players. But you'll get to see all kinds of stuff during our tournaments as we uh, have casted a couple sets earlier in the day from the lower bracket who were, like I said, silver to goldish level. So that's uh, that's what we get to see in our Lily of Legends. We get a little bit of everything. I appreciate the correction here from Master Matt to put the uh, lumber camp in, in range of the Akans so that the villagers will be inspired. I'm sure this was just like a reflex to uh, place it as close to the town center as possible. Sometimes old habits die hard, even when you're placing wood lumber camps. But uh, yeah, going into the mid game here, it will be interesting to see what we end up seeing. So there's a little bit of stone being gathered uh, by Hosen, but with only three on stone, that almost always just means military schools. I don't expect to see uh, additional town centers, not with only three builds on stone. So on the other side, the Holy Roman Empire player not gathering any stone whatsoever, which means they're probably going for a fast castle and they're they're Current resources support that as well, almost all the way up there uh, as it currently stands. So Master Mac, once again, going for a uh, semi-fast castle, which we saw in game one. Also dropping down, uh, almost actually the exact same build as, as game one. Dropping down the barracks, going to get out a couple spearmen, and then uh, going to head set up straight up for the semi-fast castle. So not much variation, and I wonder if Hosen will recognize that and be able to exploit that weakness as the game goes on. Have to be, have to be something we keep an eye on. Yeah, you said it. The only variation is that this time it's going to be men at arms that are going to come out, actually, which um, I find intriguing because they are going to slow down that castle time, you know, a lot more than the spearmen would. And I'm not sure if they are going to really be more effective against. Um, but, I mean, they, they would out counter spears, but not necessarily Spahi. Um, so, I'm not sure if that was the right choice. I noticed that um, Hosen was a um, and for. Uh, Second aid, but I like that because uh, he's going to have the opportunity to kind of snipe some of those relics away from, um, you know, Master Matt, who got, you know, all five of them last time, and uh, yeah. supposed to be able to take one out of the age. Right I totally agree. You, you, you have to know based on the build that you saw last game and what you're seeing so far in this game that Master Matt's going for the fast castle and Hosen's not too far behind. The fact that he won't have to train his Imams means that he can have them in position so that the second he reaches Castle Age, he can pick up these relics and snipe a couple away, deny them from Master Matt. That'll feel good, especially once you see that your opponent is going into Regnets again. Uh, you know, if you the more relics you deny, the more Regnets is a wasted build. And he's yeah, already he... doing that. The Imams are actually moving out to the relics right now. I love this play from Hosen. So on top of things. Very well done. The scout's going to see this, but he won't be able to do anything about it because he's a scout and because the actual units for Master Matt are really far away. And he's not going to go for the, the safest relics. He's going to try to take these two relics away um, from Master Matt. So actually, if he is able to return them in time, he could, you know, take up to four up to four relics off the map. And uh, that would be a huge win, I think, uh, for, for Hosen. I would really feel, you'd really feel like you're shutting down what your opponent wants to do, which it wasn't even successful last time against you. Um, now the uh, men at arms is gonna clash here with the Spahi. It looks like they'll actually get some decent damage in, but um, with the Imam here with its area of effect healing could potentially, well, now it's actually going to end up running away because he has to keep it alive. <laughs> um, but a little ring around the rosy will, uh, you know, let the men in arms die. Oh, oh, That's the could this be a huge well. mistake? Could this be... Low, low. <gasps> no way! Oh. That hurts. The other Imam is really close by. He'll still get the relic, but that's unfortunate. The The big loss is that the Imams can't heal each other if there's not two. Um, so what that means is you're now going to need a mosque if you are... Uh, Hosen. You don't have one yet, but without the second mosque, you can't have... There you go. Now dropped. I guess you need the mosque anyway, so you have a place to put uh, put the relics in the first place, so... Didn't think that one quite all the way through. But, uh, but yeah. Unfortunate to lose the, uh, the Imam there, all things notwithstanding. Yeah, absolutely. Especially as, uh, well, you see him going to place his units around this relic. Uh, this contested relic, right? Or soon to be contested, I imagine, because Master Matt's gonna come for it. Um, if he 
did if he if losing the imam made it so that he couldn't move out and secure the relic in time that could be uh you know a lot of resources to hand over to your opponent of course he is going to have that first one to move out now and then probably train one from the uh train one and send it over to the safe relic I love the move by Hosin to take the the middle contested relic first because what that means is that he knows these two relics on the side are much more in favor of him. So by taking that one away and then pulling back, you then kind of guarantee that the other two relics will be yours anyway. So this almost like assures that Hosin will get three relics and Master Matt will only get two. And only getting two relics when you went for the, the Regnets just feels bad. Like. You need to have three before you feel like that was a worthwhile investment. And only getting two just just doesn't feel great. And I think this was a great response to an opponent, right, in the middle of a series to, you know, for Hosen to, you know, read that Master Matt did a great job of securing the relics in the previous game, and that prob that really, you know, helped him stay competitive for longer. And, uh, you know, denying that out right now is uh, just, I think, a really good adapt adaptation. Yeah, and now Hosen's in a really great position. He knows this knight is coming around the backside. He could even look to wall it in if he if he so chose and make sure the knight goes down. He probably doesn't care that much because it's a singular knight. It doesn't pose that much threat to him. He's got the base building on point, putting all of his military production structures around a blacksmith. Like, this is just Ottoman 101, playing everything exactly the way you want it to. The MIA currently churning out those, uh, those mangonels. That feels good. Like, I just... No notes. No notes for Hosen. This is a master class in how to play the audience. Yeah, Hosen is definitely in form today. Going to be able to chase down uh, this this men at arm with uh, the Spahi. Most likely, I mean, it might make it all the way home, but it'll take a lot of damage. Um, a lot of villagers oversaturating the, the uh, food here, so... Uh, Master Matt is going to have to, you know, either really, well, continue to get on berries and berry hop, if you will, uh, or, you know, finally make a farm transition at some point. No, this has to be for a fast Imperial. Like, this is, there's no way you're just floating that many resources. Like, he's not producing out of any of his military buildings. He has to be trying for a fast Imperial here, which I think is... I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it 100 here. I think that's insane. <laughs> knowing what the knowing that the Ottomans get free military units and knowing what they can do in the Castle Age, the choice to go fast imp is a little crazy for me. But yeah, there it goes. Throwing down the Palace of Swabia, the Villager Printer. I guess maybe you're thinking your way back into this game from a little bit of a disadvantage is to just outscale your opponent by using the Villager Printer. I can see where that thought process comes from, but I, I don't know how you plan to get through the next five minutes without just dying because Ottomans push and they push hard and this is their power spike. 15 to 20 minutes is when Ottomans come and kill you. And that's exactly where we're at. You said it, this is uh, going to be a, a Hosen just saw that. He knows that, that this is his opportunity to push. He is moving in right now. And uh, you know, it's gonna be up to him to, uh, really make use of the next five minutes however as you said he has all the tools at his disposal to do it he has uh he's got the meta he has a you know decent military composition he has uh imams out to heal i hear crossbows firing already to deal with armored units um and he forgot his siege in. units though that i now have a note for Hosea. oh i guess he brought one he just forgot the other mangonel underneath the MI. okay we're good we're good i forgive you i was forgiven Hosea, my best friend again the mangonels are coming. They had to be produced automatically by the MIA. Uh, it's, I'll, I'll tease Hosen a little bit. I, I do know him personally, but... Um, it, well, not too well, but he's played in a lot of these matches, and uh, it's great to see him uh, really, really in form. Uh, this is just really going well for him. Now idling out some of this food and stone eco underneath the palace of Swabia. Now, the one thing Master Matt has going for him is that the villager printer will mean that Hosen's on a clock. He's got to end this game before the villager printer gets too out of control. He has the tools he needs to do that, but if he can't make it happen fast enough, he will find himself in trouble. Um, I'd love to see the MIA either switch to a trebuchet, or actually, I changed my mind. I don't like that. That's too late. I want to see a siege workshop thrown down halfway across the map and a trebuchet come out. 
that's the nail in the coffin here. Just I'm, just throw down a siege workshop in the middle. Don't wait for it to come out from that money. I'm I'm happy with this with the ram. I'm happy with the building the ram in the field because that's what we did not see last game quick enough from Hosen. And now that he's going to have a ram, he can actually successfully start to pressure the regnets or successfully pressure, you know, the palace of Swabia. Um, I think a little bit of indecisiveness here is is plaguing him as to where he wanted to be. He didn't want to get underneath the town center with these units. He didn't necessarily, but he doesn't want to push down here. I don't think he knows that there's just so much economy that he could um, be attacking. Um, but okay, so Hosen has 13 villagers walking across the map. I don't know what they're there for. Oh, he's a keep drop. He's keep dropping the palace of Swabia to keep the villagers from coming out. Oh, this is the uh, this poor ram was a great idea but <laughs> that's why i wasn't crazy about the ram rams need to be in groups of at least two to three two is okay three is better to be effective one ram is too easy to burn down by a group of bills that's why i wanted to see a trebuchet because there's no way for the bills to counter and stop that once the trebuchet uh you know starts firing whereas the ram oh he knows yeah, master Matt knows he puts down the outpost right where the the keep is supposed to be to stop the keep drop from happening he saw the villagers the keep will still come up but it'll be slightly out of range of the palace of swabia's left hand side which means he can get villagers out of it safely without the shot. and right now an engagement is going to come in knights are going to go forward and tank and start attacking the uh horsemen meganel's going to fire off into the spears but the uh, Hosen's crossbows are going to uh, make swift work of most of these knights. And, uh, he cleans those. that up, Master Matt, now without anything to keep himself safe. But once again, the problem is how do you kill these buildings? Manganels aren't going to do it. They do tickle damage to buildings. Crossbowmen aren't great for it either. More rams could be nice. If you, you have the money to drop two now, almost three. If you drop three rams with your crossbows, He's gonna build a siege you push in, that can happen. See, I, I don't mind this because you could, you know, either you could just build rams from the siege workshop and now you don't have to occupy your infantry. <laughs> yeah, either way would work fine. I, I, three quick rams or... Uh, here comes a trebuchet. A trebuchet would be good to put things in a great position here. A lot of... He spent all his wood, though. I'm not sure where it went. Oh, trebuchet. There it is. There it is. Trebuchet now in production. So that's what we needed to see. I have a feeling that as long as this trebuchet can stay alive, this should be the closeout here for Hosen. Like, Master Matt cannot produce on a scale fast enough to kale a trebuchet underneath the keep. It just, it just won't happen. So, this should be the beginning of the end. Here. Emergency Not repairs will make it take a little longer than usual, but he had to use it on the regnets for the second time. I mean, Master Matt, with his tournament on the line, is determined to drag this out. Going to drop a keep. Got these fortified outposts on the left-hand side. Going to try and keep things a little bit interesting. The trebuchet is going to start focusing those rather than the landmarks, the Palace of Swabia. So it will take a little longer for things to get underway. However, there's another trebuchet in production. will be out before too long, and we're still coming back to the same point over and over again, which is that Master Matt does not have the military to kill these trebuchets. So this is the delay of the inevitable, not a long-term solution. Exactly right, and uh, you know, Master Matt has idle so many of his villagers right now. Um, his economy is in shambles. The uh, you spot he were running through the wood line, and uh, this is just such a formidable location to have so much siege set up. Now the Regnitz is going to go down. Um, the, the Palace of Slavia is almost certainly next as soon as uh, these bombard towers are. The regnets going down means that your gold income is suddenly cut in half. So that passive gold that's coming in is not there anymore. Your gold that you were mining the hard way is gone. You find it out of your face. So you have nothing. Okay, that's nothing. But little gold income right now. There's no food. Master Matt is holding on, trying to hope that eventually his villagers will save him. But without a military force to kill the siege underneath this keep, it'll just siege down all of the landmarks. And all the landmarks have been placed, right? There's no hiding the fourth landmark in a corner and trying to cockroach your way to victory. That's the downside of going for fast imperial is that all your landmarks are right next to each other, and they're all in your base. And all of them can be shot from safely underneath this keep. So, like, I, I just... I, I don't want to be a Debbie Downer here. I hate the people who call games way too early, but... 
but I'm calling this game way too early. I just, I just don't see a way for it to happen here. Not even really using these units, just allowing the Trebuchets to fire, knowing that they're going to be, you know, kind of slowly whittle down these static defenses in a, in a meaningful way. And, uh, you know, Master Matt's villager lead is uh, not going to be not going to win in this this match. I would like to see. I'd like to see the Megan on the fire. But that that's that's almost no doubts. Yeah, I mean, not, for shooting at your sheep is a low priority thing as well. Like in the long term, having this keep die doesn't do much for you. Killing the palace of Swabia turns off the pillager printer as well as kills one of the landmarks. And then all your siege can just turn around and take down the two landmarks left for Master Map. So. Small little optimization things, but nothing that's going to turn the tide of this game. All of military production is about to go down, so any military that theoretically could have come out isn't going to anymore. Not that there was any resources to build any military anyway. Like he's got somewhere in the neighborhood of four times as much military as Posen does compared to Master Map. And and it, at the end of the day, numbers just kind of win out in a situation like this, especially when you're able to sit under a heat and you have all of that rain of arrow fire backing you. And when Master Matt has, you know, the Holy Roman Empire of the East over here and the Holy Roman Empire of the West over here, it's much harder to organize the defense against you know, your opponent who has their feet solidly right in your face. Uh, a blacksmith is going to go up here in order to increase the production speed of the siege workshop. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, my man's got to optimize, all right? He's... <laughs> He's the base building machine. He knows what he wants and he's going to make it happen, even if it happens in his enemy's base. I salute that. Well, good game. And, uh, you know, GG to both of our players. And, uh, you know, most especially well played to uh, Hosen for uh, taking, taking this final match.